Hi, I'm State Representative Noelle Frame from the 36th Legislative District and I represent the northwest corner of the City of Seattle. I'm coming to you today from our state capital in Olympia, where I've been this week. We ended our second special session and the governor called us into a third. I've been here all week doing my part to help our efforts around budget negotiations along with many of my House colleagues. It's a process that requires negotiation and compromise because control of the legislature is divided. Democrats have a majority in the House, Republicans have a majority in the Senate. The problem? Our Republican counterparts in the Senate haven't been negotiating for the past two months, and now that they are, they're not compromising, particularly on revenue. For the past two months, Senate Republicans have loudly and publicly refused to negotiate with us. I appreciate the feedback from my constituents and others that we should work together and negotiate in good faith. But here's my question. How are we supposed to negotiate with an empty chair? That has been the reality for our budget negotiation team until about last week. Now, in the 11th hour, we are rushing as fast as we can to make the thousands of decisions necessary to pass a budget. Unfortunately, there are only 24 hours in a day and we are simply running out of time. The consequence, if we don't get it done by June 30th, a government shutdown. And the shutdown would have devastating impacts. More than 33,000 state employees are getting layoff notices this week. But what does that mean to the average Washingtonian? Well, for starters, our park rangers are being laid off, so the state park system has already had to send out notices to more than 11,000 people with reservations for the 4th of July holiday weekend, telling them that the parks may be closed and they may not be allowed to camp. That's one heck of a disruption for families all across Washington State. Not being able to camp is an inconvenience for some, but it's a devastating loss of revenue for the many small businesses around those parks that count on that seasonal income to support their families. Some of the other impacts include families receiving housing assistance will get eviction notices. Hungry kids will not get food assistance. Veterans will go without mental health counseling for PTSD. And safety inspectors will stop inspecting pipelines, leaving us with no state assistance in the event of another gas explosion like the one that we had in Greenwood last year. Those are just a few of the thousands of impacts a shutdown would have on our community. But even more devastating than a government shutdown? the long-term impacts of not fully funding education as we are directed to by the McCleary ruling from our state Supreme Court. To me, not fully funding education is unacceptable. I've waited for the state to do its job to fully fund schools since I was a student in our public schools nearly 20 years ago. Now is not the time to punt. What is deeply disturbing that is to date, the Senate Republicans have refused to compromise on how to fund schools and the entire budget. They are taking a my way or the highway approach, insisting on a property tax only solution. Their proposal levies a massive property tax increase on districts like ours with less money for our schools, all the while giving tax breaks to property owners in the rest of the state, including tax breaks for corporate property owners like Walmart. Compromising is one thing, and we are doing that. House Democrats have offered compromise proposals for consideration over and over. But if we give in to this obstruction, if we reward this bad behavior and accept a property tax only funding proposal, we're not compromising. We'd be betraying our values and betraying our constituents. The middle class is already overburdened and it's ridiculous to ask them to take on more of a tax burden while not asking the wealthiest among us and large corporations to pay their fair share. So I will continue working to ensure we get a fair deal for our district, our students, and families and communities across Washington State. There's still time to work out a compromise, and my hope is that that will happen soon and that we'll avert a government shutdown. It is time for Senate Republicans to negotiate in good faith to start compromising on how we're going to pay for this budget. It's time for our colleagues to do their jobs as we are doing ours. If you have concerns or questions about the state budget or potential government shutdown, please don't hesitate to contact me. My contact information is on your screen right now. Thank you so much for watching. It is the honor of my life to serve as your state representative.